guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about Jesus Christ's true love for his children and how he has good intentions for all his children and he wants the best for them and it's true love. But I just want to start out with talking about what happened while I was making this video or I was preparing to make this video. There was something that popped up on my phone. Now, I'm not even subscribed to these people, but... It was like, oh, something about this woman named Paige and how she, the person had finished the videos of Paige and so-and-so dancing. And I was like, what? And I went to it. The first video was a woman. She was in red, red and gold. You know how God likes to show me I'm like a lady in red? like in his righteousness. Sometimes it'll be red, white, and gold. Sometimes it'll be red and white. Sometimes it'll be red and gold. Just means his righteousness. Red is symbolic of his blood. Actually, if you look at these earrings that God made me, there's gold in there too. I didn't even notice that at first. But anyway, she was dancing with him and in red. Do you know what the song was? they were dancing to little bitty pretty one I was like what little bitty pretty one come talk to me little bitty pretty one I'll be watching you grow I'll be watching you grow I was like that's God he made that happen he knew her name is Paige he picked the song he had her wear red the next song the next video of them dancing Somewhere over the rainbow. That's what they were sing dancing to. Which is pretty crazy because I was going to talk about Dorothy in this video. Another one, she had this outfit on. It was like fire outfit. The song, part of the song was like about being on fire. I was like... There was another one. She was dressed up like Jessie from Toy Story 2. You know how I said God inspired that part with Jesse and Emily? And how it's like how God feels if we ignore him? She was dressed up like her. Jesse means he sees or God is gracious. What was the song? You've got a friend in me. It's God. He's like, yes, I did inspire that page. <laughs> I can't make these things up. Little bitty pretty one really small to him. I talked about this a long time ago. Very tiny in his presence. Isn't that cool? Thought I'd include that. God was leading me to. He likes to show off. I can't make these things up. It's him. It's a little, it's a little rewards or it's pretty a big reward actually. Rewards he gives me shows off. You know, the love that Jesus Christ has for his children who have the Holy Spirit, it's true love. It's a deep, passionate love. You know, in this world between men and women, most of it, do you know what it is, relationships between men and women? Nothing more than lust and attraction. Nothing more than lust and attraction in this world for the most part. Now, is there true love between certain people? Yes, but it's rare. There's people, they'll be like, I'm so in love, this and that. Three years later, divorced. Ten years later, I can't stand that person. I hate them. That's what they think. Now, Christians shouldn't hate anyone, but I'm saying in the world, that's what happens. That's why if you're a woman of God or a man of God, if you're going to get married, you have to make sure... They're who God wants you to marry and that it's more than attraction. It's like real love where they'd stick it out with you even if you got sick, if something bad happened to you. True love. You got to be careful. Marry the right person that God wants for you. Real love. But no one will ever love you the way Jesus Christ does. And it's true love. That's why when... God would show me I'm going to get married. I'd be kind of like, really? 
Because I'm only going to marry the man God wants for me and, and that it's true love. I would make sure it's true love and not just attraction. True love so rare in this world. But guess what? Jesus Christ has it for you. And he proved it. You know, Jesus Christ, when he was beaten, he couldn't even be recognized as a human that's how beaten he was. It says, as many were astonished at thee, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. Totally disfigured. Before Jesus Christ became human, right? He was in heaven with Father, right? They're three in one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Three persons, one God. But Jesus Christ is God because he's the fullness of the Godhead bodily. They're three in one. Before that, do you think he ever felt physical suffering, physical pain? No, I don't believe so. Now, don't get me wrong, God does suffer. He feels suffering, he cries, and he has emotional pain, but I don't think he felt physical pain. He's God. He's king. He's immortal. He's just... Yet he became a human for us. He became really small, really little, really tiny for us. You know, everyone watching this, me included... I think we can all agree being human isn't that great. <laughs> it's just true. We're in sinful flesh. We suffer. We feel pain, emotional pain, physical pain. It's not the greatest thing because of the fall, right? Now, I'm grateful for everything God's given me, and I do have joy over him and stuff, but I'm just saying that's how I believe every human being feels. It's not the greatest thing. I mean, Jesus Christ knows that. He became human. He knows how it feels. Imagine that, being king, immortal, never feeling any physical pain, but because of such deep love coming and rescuing us and being human on this earth for 33 years and suffering horrible physical pain and emotional pain being whipped beaten nailed to the cross totally naked shamed in front of everyone because of his deep love that's some passionate love there he proved his love for us by dying for us and suffering horribly. I mean, would you do that for someone? He didn't even have anywhere to rest his head. He was like, I don't even have a place to rest my head. King of the entire universe. Poor. Became a poor man. That's why when I say mm, he deserves our love more than any human being ever. He did more for you than anyone ever could. And he loves you more than anyone. He would show me that. I love you more than anyone loves you. You know what I'm saying? He loves you more than anyone loves you. More than humans love you. He would inspire things for me. Where, where the man was whipped. And, and the woman, or he'd have scars. And the woman would be looking at them. She'd look at them like, it's like God showing me, look, I suffered for you. I was whipped for you. Hey, passionate love he's got there. You know, there's this woman that I, I watch at times on YouTube. She's not born again. I just watch her at times. She makes videos about her life. She's in this relationship with this man. And it's not a good relationship, right? But she loves him. And he'll treat her badly. She'll talk about it. And then what ends up happening, she just goes back to him. 
It's like happened over and over and over and over. And when I see that happening, I'm like, girl, I totally get you. I just, I don't even like judge her on that. I'm just like, now she needs God in her life, but what is she looking for? Love. She just wants the man to love her. And so she puts up with him treating her badly. It's something women in this world do. It's so common too. Don't get me wrong. It can happen with men too. But people are looking to be loved. We need love from our creator. That's where your love should come from. I mean, the spouse too. I mean, we want to be loved by our spouse God would like create these things for me and I would, he would show me how he loves me and I would still, he would still tell me, he would show me, you don't know how I love you still. You don't know. That's how deep it is. He deserves it. He deserves that love from you. He really wants it too. He really wants that love. Now, how do we love him? By keeping his commandments, right? Not doing evil, sins unto death, but also relationship. Talking to him, praising him, being with him, quality time. You know, giving him things, serving him. You know, when you're fighting the devil and resisting sin, unto death and you're God's child. Do you know what God feels? He's like, I feel so loved right now. He feels so loved when you do that. Because he's like, they're, they're willing to suffer for me. Because when you don't sin unto death and you want to or you're being tempted to, it makes you suffer, right? But you can't do it. Your flesh suffers but you use your love for God to obey him. It makes him feel loved. You know, sometimes I'd be so filled with the Holy Spirit and I would be like, I would feel like the most fierce warrior ever. I'd feel, that's how I'd feel. Do you know why I feel that way? Because that's Jesus Christ's image. He's the greatest warrior who ever lived. That's his image. You know how I said he'll, he'll, you know, refine you into his image and it's the, the fruit of the spirit. Guess what else he is? He's a tough warrior. That's who he is. And I would literally feel, do you know what I would feel? I'd be like, I am him. I am him. I feel like I'm him. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not him, right? He lives in me. He lives in his children, but we walk as he walked and he refines us into his image. And don't get me wrong. I have, you know, sin in me. I have, you know, I'm not saying willful sin. You know what I'm saying? I have flaws in me. I have fears and things like that that need refinement. Refinement is like a lifelong process and we still won't be perfectly him because he's perfect but he refines us into his image but I'd be like I feel I am him it'd be amazing it's that's who he is he's not some hippie cool with everyone's sin what people think he is he's a fierce warrior who went to the cross as a warrior horribly disfigured for us a lot of love there and he proved it right he totally deserves it I just want to get into how we're under God's feathers he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler you know there's things God has created for me where the woman would be under feathers or he'd like include feathers in it. Like to tell me I'm under his feathers. What does this mean? It's like we're under his wing. He relates to himself in scripture as like a mother eagle over her young. 
it means protection. And we are to trust in him under his wings. Right? Now, Romeo and Juliet. Parts of that was inspired by God. I've talked about this before. This is something God made for all his daughters. There's things God's made just for me and just for some of his other people. And then there's things he'll make for all of his daughters or all his people or the people who can see it. Romeo and Juliet. Why does he do this? It's like he, he wants to, to show you how he loves you through it. That's why he's created things like this. And he's taught me he does it. It's like to show me how he loves me, to reward me. And so I can see how he loves me. Like if it's in a movie, he teaches through the story, right? What, what is Juliet? What does her name mean? Downy. What does Downy mean? Covered in feathers. Downy. And God's like Romeo. I'm telling you, he created part of Romeo and Juliet. Parts of it. Okay. Parts of it. And he deserves the credit. I'll tell you. A lot of people don't know it, though. It's a spiritual thing. What does is, what is Romeo tell Juliet? He's like, oh, you, Juliet is the sun. He would talk about her. He'd be like, oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. Like, she's so bright to him. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night like a rich jewel. In an Ethiop's ear, beauty too rich for use, for earth too dear. She shows a snowy dove trooping with crows. She's like a white dove in the mists of crows. Do you know what that is? That's you surrounded by wolves. That's what that is. <laughs> it, it confirms in Song of Solomon too because... You know how God would tell me I'm like his son, I'm like the moon and all this. It's in the Song of Solomon. I'm like his sunshine, whatever. His children are like the sun. We have his light in us. We're very bright like the sun and bright like the moon. What else does, does Romeo say? You know, but soft what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon. Like the moon is jealous of her because she's so bright and beautiful. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Part of that inspired by God. You see, a woman's heart is romantic. Jesus Christ is romantic. When I say that, I'm not saying it in any type of way that's like sexual. It's holy. It's just kind of like he wants to kiss you on the cheek. He wants to give you a flower. He wants to show you how he loves you. He wants to tell you beautiful things about yourself. That's romantic. It's just showing how he loves you, right? He does the same thing with God's sons. It's I wouldn't say it's romantic, but it's, you know, showing you how he loves you. It's different, though. He doesn't, like, give you a flower. It's just different with women, right? Women need to know this because if women don't know this, guess where they're going to go for their love? Men. Men. Their romantic love for men. God shows me how he loves me. It's a wooing. It's romantic. He shows me. He gives me the flowers. He, he makes jewelry for me and all these things. He fulfills that in me. So I, today he was showing me, talk about Romeo and Juliet. I want my daughters to know how I feel about them, how I look at them. Because it's needed. It's like, so we can see it, so we can know it, how he feels. It edifies us. You know the whole thing where where it says, like, where he Romeo was saying, like, you're you're like, a white dove in the midst of crows. It's like you. It's interesting, too, because the dove is like the Holy Spirit. It's like symbolic. If you're being born again. 
like you're surrounded by wolves. God would show me I'm like little Bo Peep, right? I've talked about this. I'm like little Bo Peep that lost her sheep and don't know where they're at. Like I'm looking for God's sheep when I preach. What does Bo Peep have? She has like a shepherd's staff. She's like a little shepherdess. That's what God's, you know, leaders are. We're like mini shepherds. We watch over the flock. God's the good shepherd. He's the main shepherd. But it's like, we're like little mini shepherds. He lives on us. You know what I'm saying? And when the wolves come, you know what I do? I take my staff, which looks like a, a candy cane, right? It looks like the candy cane. It's like the upside down J. That's what I have. I take it and I like beat them off, you know, symbolically. I'm like, get out of here, you wolves. Stop being hateful and unloving. Go repent, be born again. And I protect the sheep. And then I teach you how the Pharisees come in your mind to accuse you and to protect you. It's part of my calling, right? Paul did the same thing. Paul was like a mini shepherd, a leader, right? And he'd be like, oh, I, I've warned you. You know, when I leave, grievous wolves are going to come in here. And he's like, I, I, I've warned you night and day with tears for like three years or something. <laughs> That's what happens. What are the wolves? It's, it's people with false doctrines that come in. People who treat others like dirt and all these things. There's people also that have Pharisee doctrines. I'm not saying they themselves are a wolf, okay? But they're deceived by Pharisee doctrines and they try to teach them to people. But there were people coming to people in the Bible and, and they were telling them, you must be circumcised, you must keep this day, trying to put them under the law. And Paul was very upset about that. And he's like, they'll bear their judgment for doing this. He would go on and he'd whack him off with his staff, symbolically. You know what I'm saying? It's part of what I'm doing here. God wants people to know who he is and his mercies and we're not under the law anymore. And also there's wolves everywhere that are going to try to destroy you. If you're God's sheep, you're like a, a white dove in the midst of crows. So Jesus Christ's love is pure, true love, and he deserves our love, and he wants to show you how he loves you. You need to fellowship with him. He really wants you to spend time with him, and then ask him to teach you how he speaks, so he can show you how he loves you. Part of my calling, you know, is showing people how God speaks to me. God speaks in so many different ways. But I'm here to teach you guys certain ways. He could speak in dreams, speaks to you right through the spirit, objects, things he makes, symbols, all different movies. and He does. He wants to show you how he loves you. Now this second part of the video, I'm going to just be showing you guys some of the cool things God's shown me. And I'm going to be just going more into, you know, Romeo and Juliet. Because God wants people to know, especially his daughters, how he loves them. How he looks at them. When God showed me he's romantic, it changed my whole life, I think. Because then I was like, I don't need men anymore. Men who don't love me, who don't treat me right, who it was never true love to begin with. You see what I'm saying? But if women don't know that, they're going to go and want a man, you know? Not that I wouldn't want a husband, like in God's timing, but Jesus Christ completes us. It's so personal that it's like, there is no me without him anymore. I don't even exist as a separate being from him because I'm one in spirit with him. It's that intense. 
so many of the stories I had watched, a lot of them got inspired <laughs> to show me how he loved me. I had no idea about these things because I didn't know if it was okay or things like this. God's very romantic and poetic. All right. You remember when I was showing you guys this <laughs> the other day, like in my last video I made, okay? I was showing you guys this and it was like Hello Kitty, remember? And she had the, the candy cane, right? And then it was, you know, Minnie and Mickey Mouse. Look at what someone put right here the next time I went there. Look what it says on it. Peppermint. <laughs> I was like, what? That's God. No, I said, use. he tells me, use peppermint. He used that. Just to confirm it. Be like, yeah, it's me, peppermint. Now, I know when I show people this, some people will think I'm insane, but it's him. And he just loves showing off. Here's, <laughs> you know those nail things God made me with the white heart? Now he confirmed peppermint, white heart. You know, Charlie's Angels. It was in Charlie's Angels. It was also in, you know, Snow White and the Huntsman, the white heart. It was also in Shadow and Bone. It's just him confirming things. Guess where they put it? Right next to Minnie and Mickey Mouse. I was like, what? You know, it's really interesting because this was um, another time I went to go see it like, and look at the nail things again. I always go and look and see if God's doing anything. He puts this stuff in people's minds. This was there. And I was like, oh, you know, you're confirming Minnie, Mickey Mouse again. But then they changed it and moved it like this with Minnie and Mickey. He's just confirming he speaks through it. He's confirmed Disney so many times, just uh, in so many different ways. Here's the holly berry, which means the blood of Christ. He just confirms it to show me for sure because I was afraid of Disney for years. And, um, you know, he's taught me, he speaks through it. Here's a red bow. <laughs> you know, the I am jewelry. God's spoken to me through the I Am jewelry. He makes a lot of it, right? They started selling hair things, okay? And it was the red bow. What's the red bow I've been showing people? You know, God gives me a red dress. It means red is like his righteousness, right? Like his blood upon me. And then I showed you guys baking soda, and, and it said on it the standard of purity, Right? Because Jesus Christ's standard is his purity and he gives it to us. Here down here is bells. I use my bell. I have like the red bell. Oh, let's see what Dorothy wears on her feet. The red bow. God, God created part of Wizard of Oz. He did. It's, uh, here's the star which means infinite divine love, even though they weren't using it that way. He just uses it for good. It's like, you know, God's daughter is like Dorothy. She, what does Dorothy mean? Gift of God, gift from God, gift from God, red bow. She got the red shoes on. The shoes, it's like the blood of Christ. What do they represent? Preaching. What is what what do they say to her? Oh, you know, the wicked witch, she wants those shoes, right? Represents Satan. And it's like, oh, you better keep those shoes on. You know, they're they're really powerful. That's why she wants them. It's God made that. It means preach. Satan doesn't want you to preach, you know. I mean, according to your calling, you know, God would show me that. He'd be like, go look at what what Dorothy's wearing. He'd show me that. I was like, Wow, okay. <laughs> it's him. This God showed me the other day. All right. Like yesterday. Here we have bride. Here's a, uh, the honeycomb. It's a six. It says hive. It's like, you know how God would tell me I, I make honeycomb, like the hexagon. Here's a, uh, 
unicorn. He exalted me like the horn of the unicorn. And here's Polly Pocket. You know how God was showing me? I'm like, Polly Pocket? I'm like really small? Do you know what Polly means? It means small or little. But I was looking at it and you know what else it means? Star of the sea. I was like, how do you do this? He's, he's God. Also, there's some uh, palm trees. God would show me I'm, uh, you know, flourishing like the palm tree. He really does create on that level. Does he create everything? I mean, he uses things. He creates things. But he's so high, he probably does create all of it, I'm telling you. But, you know, I'm his bride. He exalted me like the horn of the unicorn. I'm a little like Polly Pocket, star of the sea, and I flourish like the palm tree. I know that sounds crazy, but he tells me he wants me to do it. So <laughs> I do it. Now, I'm just going to get into some of the things God made me. Sorry, I know, like, I should have washed the screen first. It has some fingerprints on it. But this is Deuna Vez, right, with Selena Gomez. You know how I told you God created a lot of things for me through her to reward me and all these things? This is her laying down. It's like resting in his righteousness. What is she in? It's called the daisy dress. God showed this to me. I didn't even see this at first. And then after he showed me about rest, he showed this to me again. This is like a Catholic thing, but it represents that I have the Holy Spirit. I rest in his righteousness. Daisies mean purity. I'm just going to show you different ways God has shown me this over and over again. Because it just confirms he creates it. It confirms... The message, and, and when the message is very important, he'll show it to me over and over again at times. Here's shiny, you know. I showed everyone this before. It was God telling me to save his people. This name means God. You know, my, my mouth is like wine. I bear fruit. Then, you know, the blue butterfly is down there. There's another one on his pants. Okay, I have joy over my love for you. And then you see over here the candy cane. And what is the message? The guy's sitting down with, you know, the shirt that said God and have joy over my love for you. The blue butterfly sitting in, sitting down. Rest in my righteousness. Candy cane, right? Again, it's just in a different way, right? It's just again and again. It's even in other things that I'm not going to show. Just... Here's, you know, superstar. Again, the pillow means rest. The daisies, rest in my righteousness, okay? The windmill means the Holy Spirit, the, the wind. The Holy Spirit's like wind, right? God's very symbolic. Have joy over my love for you. I mean, this means perfect love, okay? under my feathers. I'm just showing you guys some of the things he'd show me about, like I'm under his feathers. And th that's how you fight the demons, under my wing, in rest. And, and uh, I'm your biggest fan, the hexagons. He likes to use soccer, I've told people this. He would show me soccer balls to show me I'm his biggest fan. I mean, he's my biggest fan. Well, I'm his biggest fan too, but <laughs> you know, the hexagons, it's because I make honeycomb. And the five pentagon is, it means God's grace, love, and mercy. And also, you know, I make a pop. He showed me this later. He made <laughs> show me that. This is God showing off completely. It's him. But I'm going to show you guys something God showed me. I've already shown people this stuff, okay, most of it. It's just me showing you guys again how he confirms it, and it's like the same message over and over. It's also to free people from Pharisee doctrines, to show people God speaks through these things. So God, and, and it's him showing off. It's him showing people he's real, too. This God showed this to me. I always tell him, show me everything you made me. Put it in my face. He was showing me this video. This is called Born to Make You Happy by Britney Spears. You see here, 
and he kept uh, he kept putting this in my face but I didn't really see it at the beginning and then it, I fully saw the video and I was like oh my wow here she is resting in this bed it's a red bed right most red and here's rocks around her you know how I said we're on the rock my last video if you keep his commandments you're on the rock She's just resting there. What's on her shirt? What is that? The blue butterfly is there on her shirt. Rest in my righteousness, but let's also see what, what else is in there. Under my feathers, my feathers, rest and under my feathers. You know, you're on the rock. And this, this right here, God wanted me to include this. This is a, a stance for victory right here. The red and white bed, you know, the red and the white feather, candy cane, rest in my righteousness and you're victorious in me. Very awesome. It's, this is God showing off. I was like, wow, that was, that's cool. <laughs> and he's like, show my children this. And then the end. You know, she's resting. Isn't that cool? Now, I'm just going to go into um, and have joy over my love for you. Now, this is stuff God made me. It's like very, you know, personalized for me. It's like my rewards. But he likes me to show some of my rewards because it, you know, it glorifies him and for many reasons. And it's a good message for all God's children, okay? Now, I'm just going to go into what God made all God's daughters this is Romeo and Juliet. This, this is how God looks at you. This scene from Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio, God made this scene. He would show me. It's like, you know that verse when the verse in Song of Solomon, my my beloved, it's like a heart. He look he looketh at me through the window. It's like a window he's looking at her through. You see? And, and she's an angel. She's dressed up like an angel and he looks at her. God like writes it in there. Like look at her with love. Look at her like that and this. You see? It's like him looking at her through the window. God's daughters need to see this. It's very edifying. He looks at her through the window and he's like in love with her. It's like how he looks at his daughters. And then she gets, you know, uh, driven away by her nurse. And you see she's an angel, which I said God's daughters, God's people are like angels, right? We're messengers. God would show me I'm like an angel. And then, and then what does he do? He runs after her and pursues her. Right? Like, <laughs> you know, in a very romantic fashion. Then she's, her, she's starting to dance with this guy. And what's there? The f peacock feather. God would include peacock feathers in things. And he'd be like, I'm showing off to you right now. The peacock feather. He, he would put it in things. He put it in things just for me, but this one's for like all God's daughters. The peacock feather, I'm showing off to you because he has the wing. It's like the peacock. And then he's over there and he's so in love with her. He's like, so in love. That's like how God looks at his daughters. And guess who's over there? And after that, this man dressed up like Satan, and these represent demons. He's like, oh, I'm going to destroy him. Guess what's behind there? Picture of Jesus Christ. God made that scene, that part. I'm not going to say he made all of Romeo and Juliet or all of the movie, but that scene. He's like, this is how I love you. This is how I look at you. This is how I pursue you. But guess who wants to destroy it? The devil. That's how he loves his daughters. I mean, it's how he loves his sons too, but this is more like a romantic thing for them. Inspire that. He even put the peacock feather in there. Isn't that edifying? 
It's like he he goes after us. He pursues his bride and woos her. Because he wants you to fall in love with him. When you come to him and you repent and you keep his commandments, you have the Holy Spirit, you love him, right? But he wants you to love him more. He wants you to fall madly in love with him. That's how he feels. He does this. It's, it's his wooing. It's his romancing. He does this with me. And I'm telling you, I'm totally in love with him. But it took me a long time. And like the feelings too, just. He wants you to fall deeply in love with him. It's true love with him. Be careful who you marry. And no, even that person won't complete you. Jesus Christ does. It's his true love that completes us. We need to love him and keep him first. All right, love you guys. Bye.